We are diving into Shadowlands Wolf's new uh, latest album, which was initially a solo project. So, welcome, Nicholas, tonight. For those who don't know you, can you introduce yourself and band? Uh, well, uh, I've been having this band, uh, Wolf, uh, or been a part of this band, Wolf, for 25 years. We're a band from Sweden, started in 95 when it was not cool to play metal. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> We didn't like the 90s much and we just wanted to play the, the music that we liked and uh, released the first album in year 2000 and now we have just released our ninth album shadowland well that's Perfect. that's quite a time you have been active yeah yeah i released just like a few days ago but um do you have like a feedback on how it's being received and uh, how do you feel about it? It feels great, actually. It's been it's been very well received, uh, and we had such a positive feeling within the band about the album. So we would be surprised if it, it if it wasn't. But I, I think something just happened with this, this album. It's feels a bit special and maybe the timing was right people were ready for it it's been the re reception of the album has been amazing and re the reviews have been great it was great to hear for sure cool Niklas so I was taking your discography and uh, I see that uh, you were releasing albums every two, three years, but there was a gap for six years. So what happened uh, in these years to Wolf? What? Where you have been? <laughs> yeah, it was many, many factors. Uh, we released the album Devil Seed. It, it, it went really great and we toured a lot with that album. And that, that meant that we couldn't, you know, write so much and record. Uh, and also when I started to, when I started to write, on the next album after Devil Seed, which was uh, Feeding the Machine, mm -hmm. I it was like something I had to get out of me. I, I wrote the whole thing, you know, I, I don't write all the music in Wolf, uh, but I write all the lyrics. And it, it was a very therapeutic three year long writing session that I just had to go through because when I was young, I was. Uh, in a very very dark place when I uh, before I started Wolf, and when I was out of that phase, I was mm -hmm. like twenty four or something. In my, mm -hmm. I I just put the lid on and moved on with my life. Tried to forget everything about it, but I couldn't, and it's been haunting me. Like I, I have some un unsolved issues within myself, and writing for the Feeding the Machine album. That was a big help for me. And after the last song, I felt like, uh, you know, I've been to 1,000 therapy sessions and, and I was really uh, like a new mom. Yeah, so that was one, only one of the reasons it took so long. But also Simon, our guitar player in the band, mm -hmm. has built a studio, like a real old school professional studio. It's been, took like, I don't know, took two two years, one or more years, more than he had calculated because when he started then, you know, it just, the project just went bigger and bigger and more expensive and, well, he, he really, went, you know, it, it's, ama it's an amazing studio. It's like one, I remember when we started out, when we used to record in real <laughs> music studios <laughs> back in the day, this is one of those studios. So... Okay. Um, that took also, you know, a lot of time and energy f for for the album, and then we had two members leaving during the mm -hmm. recording of Feeding the Machine, so we had to find new members. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of factors that made it take six years. 
to yeah. come up with that, that album. And then we went on tour, uh, but then the COVID pandemic hit, so we had to abort the tour. <laughs> but but yeah. that me meant that you know we could only focus on writing the new material for the new Wolf mm -hmm. album, which is Shadowland, that's just been released. So that yes. album two years from the previous album. Yeah, you're back on track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great, that's great. Great, so you mentioned that uh, you had two members leaving and two members, I assume, were coming. So the newest members were uh, Pontus and Johan, correct? Yeah, yeah. And I wonder, how did they inspire uh, Sh uh, Shadowland? A lot, really, really. It's uh when we found the, those guys uh it was like a christmas present from god <laughs> it was just because we didn't know what to do with ourselves it was just simon and me uh after we had his last show with the other guys and then they they were out of the band and and they moved on and we didn't even have the album fully recorded and released we didn't know what to do but through mutual contacts we had uh mike weed from king diamond he is a friend of wolf and he had seen johan play on a birthday party just for fun you know behind <laughs> a drum he was really impressed so he was asking around because he knew that we were looking for a drummer he was asking around and he asked the bass player of king diamond which is pontus if you knew this guy and it, it happens to be one of pontus old old friends and they've been playing a lot together uh, from you know many many years ago i don't know 10 20 years ago uh and been playing in d different projects and bands so they know each other really well uh and it turned out that yuan was looking for a band and then pontus also wanted to join uh, mm -hmm. so it was like a pure i don't know like i said it felt like a christmas present from god <laughs> <laughs> and they were perfect and i i love the way the, the way that you play the drums, it's perfect for Wolf. And the same goes with Pontus. His style, his musicality, everything is so perfect for what we do. And they are really nice guys as well and easy to work with. So we're really happy now. That's, that might be the secret ingredient of why uh, Shadowland is such an amazing uh, album. Yes, it's definitely one of the secret ingredients. It, they brought so much positive energy and good vibes uh, and i mean i admire and simon as well we both admired their uh, mu musical ability so much and uh, mm -hmm. it that you know lit the spark in us to to uh, start writing and recording it was so fun to work with them it was like you know like we've been the first rehearsal we did together <laughs> I started laughing. I, I stopped playing and started laughing. It sounded so good. I mean, I, could, I couldn't believe it, how we had never played together, uh, the four of us, never, you know. It's completely so it was, new, but it sounded amazing. It? And the next, the next rehearsal was even better. And, and from that on, it's been just a pure joy to, to play with them. It was a chemistry. Yeah, chemistry and also a lot of experience from other yes. bands and uh i mean we're, from, we're, from we're, we're, <laughs> yeah okay. um, i mean we're not it's it's not our first rodeo so to say we've been doing this for a long time but in different yes. bands but uh without without the four members now have been doing this for so many years in different constellations it it wouldn't have worked but we are great musicians and they have great experience and that you know we haven't rehearsed so much with wolf but we have rehearsed in other bands for so many so <laughs> many so many years so it was like uh you know it, it it felt like and it sounded like we had rehearsed with this band for i mean for years at the first rehearsal so uh yeah we were lucky to find each other i think uh, yeah, and, uh, it sounds perfect. And also, I think the different backgrounds like Ki King Diamond is something else, but it helps like a new yeah. perspective in the uh, world. Thank you for the story. About the um, Shadowland, the album, well, the information we have is that, you know, it started as a solo project of some sort. 
but I'm wondering like uh, how it turned into the Wolf album. Like you did say that during the pandemic you had time to to make an album, and um, that's exactly what you did. But uh, how did that idea change, and like what happened after? Well. I started to write a couple of songs. The first song I wrote was Shadowland, and that was in the end of the recording of Feeding the Machine. And I was so exhausted mentally by that album, so I just needed to do something else. And I, I, I always had always have planned from you know twenty years ago to do something else besides Wolf, something different. You know, uh, artistically, I needed to do something different. I thought, well, I, I can start now. So I wrote Shadowland. I wrote couple of more songs but after a while I realized uh, that you know by at that time we got the new members in and I also start to realize mm -hmm. that I think I've written new wolf songs and I played the songs for the other guys and they you know liked it and it's it sounds like wolf and uh, <laughs> we just carried on so uh, there was never a solo project and um, I'm really mm -hmm. happy about that you know uh, so it was just my or original plan for this for for the first songs but then when we got this band together I ditched those plans immediately and uh, mm -hmm. you know we took it to to Wolf and then we continued to write the rest of the songs together And how did uh, did you uh, like, uh, member uh, help uh, uh, the yeah, like uh, Pontus, who is a new songwriter in Wolf, he, he likes to write instrumental songs from start to finish, full ideas, mm -hmm. and then uh, sometimes co-written with Simon, and they send me like a song, uh, but no vocals, no lyrics, nothing, and I try to work my best and, and, and give it the, the Wolf touch. If I... If I feel, feel like the, the vocals, the, the lyrics, everything is starting to take the song somewhere, maybe then I, I try different things with the arrangement and, and, and respectfully change a few details uh, because the song starts to tell me a story. But mm -hmm. like in many songs, I didn't have to do that. Like, uh, for instance, the, the last song, um, Into the Black Hole, uh, it was like, I didn't change a thing. I just wrote the lyrics and the melodies and, and, and it sounded like everything was very f fit together. So, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's when everything worked this, this way. Got a connection. Yeah, and also, I mean, I wrote a co, I had the beginning of a song, the bonus tracks, the bonus track, yes. um, yeah, well, people wonder why is that the bonus track is the best yes. song, but yeah, it, it's because it's a bonus. It's you yes. got the best last one. Uh, no, but anyway, I, I had when I went to the studio, I, I had the beginning of the song, uh, and I really liked mm -hmm. it. I thought it was good material, but I did I couldn't get anywhere with it. I was so exhausted from writing the other songs. So. I had the beginning, uh, we needed a bonus track because uh, for Japan and other stuff, and it's in our yes. contract with Central Media that we should provide a bonus track. So, okay, we had a half a song. And then when I went to the studio in my car, I just got the ending in my head and sang it into my phone. And wow. So, but the ending was a completely different tempo. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, so we had, a, I know <laughs> there's a big min mid section lacking in the song. But then one night, Simon and I, we sat with two guitars and, and just wrote it together. So we had the, then we had the complete song and then we just arranged it and, and um, recorded it. And usually I don't like writing in, in, in the studio. When, when I am in the studio to record an album, I really want to focus on recording and performing, you know. Okay. Uh, but this, this was a nice song that came together and it was great to sit sit with another songwriter together in the same room because I don't usually write that anymore because we live so far apart so um, I write mostly by myself in my studio and we send ideas back and forth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. that's an interesting yeah. story cool yeah 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 that's what I wanted to ask because I know bands doing bonus track for Japan is uh, 
tip ball. So you are going to have another bonus track to bonus. Yeah, track. we have, have another bonus track, and that one we have oh, saved, okay. saved for Japan, or oh, okay. maybe we save it for later. Uh, but the thing is, wh when we went to the studio to record, we had the 10 songs, and I really felt like these 10 songs tell the story from start to finish and, and it is a good opening uh both musically and lyrically and it ties together very nicely and the end both musically and lyrically so that is the 10 songs that are on the lp on the, on the vinyl because i felt that the album was complete but then when we wrote the uh, trial by fire everybody liked it so much uh, and uh, no one wanted to ditch it, you know, <laughs> have it just for the fans. So we had to have another uh, second bonus song. And that one is called In the Twilight Zone. And that was a song that Pontus had. And I wrote one night in the studio, I stayed up, was drinking beer and recorded and wrote vocals for it. Uh, and that, that one we have saved for later. Very good. So, Nicholas, <laughs> so Nicholas, let's go back to the previous album, uh, Feeding the Machine. And I would like to ask you about the Feeding the Machine self-titled song. Uh, what do you think about the social media? Social media, do, I'm very... Yeah. Are, uh, they uh, using, uh, are they using us? Or <laughs> we... We yeah, that money. was yeah. the idea. I, I have been, you know, using social media for 10 years and I, I started to see many benefits and, you know, connected to people, reach out to people. When I, when I didn't have a day job, I started, I took up art again and, and uh, did drawings and paintings and people wanted to buy them. And I sold a lot so I could pay for food, food for my children. And that was all through Facebook. And I, I felt like it's a lot of, lot, it's, it's a good thing. But then like around 2016, 17, around that time, I really started feel, feeling like I'm not using social media. It, it, it had really changed, I think, especially Facebook. Uh, to become like a monster or something. I, I felt like I'm not using feeding. Uh, I'm not using Facebook anymore. Facebook is using me. And if you, st if it, if you do a little bit of research, you know, 100% that that is the case. Uh, and you just think about if you have a product that you don't pay for, then you are the product. And I think I've seen so many you know, negative things about uh, social media lately. Uh, yeah, I think in the, in the last like eight years, I'm very, I think I notice myself that I'm, I'm more happier without it usually, but it's still a good tool. It's like TV. It can be very destructive. You know, yes. some people are just sitting in front of the, the TV set like zombies. That's, <laughs> I, 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 I can't get why, why anyone would want to live a life like that, but it becomes addictive and some people just, they stop living their life and just watch TV. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm Swedish, so I know when I grew up in Sweden, people and people my age and, and older spend their whole life in front of a TV. I think it's so tragic. And the same is okay. starting to, to, you know, I feel the same with safe with Facebook, but now I'm, I'm the addictive. <laughs> one you know uh, so uh, the addicted one uh, it's a yeah you know but feeding the machine is, is like that i was answering friend requests and i was noticing this can't be real friends it's just some algorithm and this was before <laughs> the ad term algorithm was really what people were talking about but i felt this this can't be real what the fuck yes. am i doing sitting here i should fall asleep but i have like 50 friend requests and I started to notice that no one really knows me, cares, about, no one knows who I am. Why on yes. earth do they want to add me? I'm just a boring guy. I use it for my band, but they didn't know. It was apparent they didn't know the band. It was just fucking algorithms, you know. And I felt, like, I felt like I was sitting there feeding into this machine. <laughs> and that was the start of the song. I was so pissed off of all of that. So that's the song, <laughs> Feeding the Machine. <laughs> It's like your inconsci uh, inconsci uh, inconsciousness 
is like working and you are just putting it into lyrics and Shadowland, yeah. if I understand correctly, you dove into your inco uh, unconsciousness even more and you tried without overthinking just uh, writing to lyrics and so on. So can you tell us what uh, you explored in uh, Shadowland? Yeah, I, I, it's uh, hard to explain, but I, after feeding the machine, I was writing a lot about this stuff uh, and a lot about the stuff I, I experienced when I was young that I, I needed to write as a therapy. But I was also writing about things happening in the world. This was the time, at the time when IS was murdering, the Islamic State was murdering people, burning, you know, beheading young girls and everything. And I felt that was so f terrible. And uh, I got pretty close to it because I live in a town where we have one of those suburbs that are full of people like that. Uh, and, you know, as these things started to unfold, I couldn't help myself. I started to write about that. But now for this album, I wanted to write something timeless. I didn't want to write as a, as a therapy or uh, I didn't want to write about occurring things in the world right now. I wanted to write about something deeper. So I was listening a lot to, uh, you know... Uh, I was listening a lot to Carl Sagan's old programs about space and I was I was so fascinated about you know what it is to be on this planet for a while and what it is to be humans I was kind of in my mind exploring the outer space and also the inner space within myself and I always write like this I try not to think too much so I couldn't really explain in, in words in a good way what the songs, some songs are about, but it's, it's a gut feeling. Uh, so I try to just stay very honest. When the songs start to develop, I try to just be open for the song and do what it wants. I try not to uh, write too much in my head and um, try to be smart about things. So uh, just, you know, music and lyrics, it's, I think it, it it must come from from the inside, and and uh, yep. I think I just took that to the next level on this one. And yes, yeah, certainly. And that dust is, I think, a very good example for a timeless song where it's all about that we turn into dust, basically. Yeah, we came from stardust, and we will turn to <laughs> dust when yes. our song, our, our sun will, <laughs> will will die, and you know, Earth will die, and then. The sad thing is that no one will ever know that we were here. If there ever is another, you know, intelligent life in space. Uh, but the good thing, I think you can take it positive as well. You can take it as like, we just have this short time here. So we have to make the best out of it because when it's gone, it's gone. Certainly. So let's now go to the artwork. Daniel is asking the following uh, question. How does Nicholas feel about the artwork of their debut album? Because I've seen many people over the years complaining about the artwork and so on. I myself really like the artwork on that one. Yeah, it, uh, Hans Arnold is a legend in Sweden. He originally came from Switzerland, but he moved to Sweden when he was young and he wanted to study art. And he had a very specific style and he this was like I, I i saw his work in the 70s when my mom was reading books to me and he was a prolific you know uh, illustrator so he, he was illustrating children's books detective stories also in adult magazines so if there was a story he was usually uh, illustrated he was everywhere in in uh, old ladies magazines as well you know he, he and and you immediately saw that it was him and he his, he also did a, a cover for abba uh, an album cover for abba and other bands as well oh. i think mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah so in sweden he was not unknown he was very very well known and uh, a lot of his stuff was extremely cool as uh, and he was my hero when i grew up i was drawing a lot and drawing a lot of monsters and and, and stuff like that so he was my hero and when we started the band the, the other guy who started the band with me michael who was on, on bass guitar he also liked hans arnold everybody knew him so we tried to find him and use him as our derek riggs you know derek riggs who did the iron maiden 
albums. We <laughs> want yes. to like the idea of having one guy doing, so it was continuum, you know. And I couldn't find him. This was before internet was a thing. And I, I really couldn't, I, I met, searched him ev everywhere. I couldn't find this mysterious old uh, Swiss man. And then I just, wait, wait a minute, I, I can check the phone book. In those days we had a, you know, yes. <laughs> a very <laughs> book with all the phone numbers. Yeah. And there he was, Hans Arnold, illustrator. And I was, what? <laughs> so I called him up and he answered the phone and uh, I explained, you know, why I called and uh, and he said, well, come over. So me and a friend, we went over to his place in Stockholm and, and uh, it was, I mean, his, his apartment, it was like, uh, it was everything you would expect from an artist like that. We walked up to a spiral stair and it was like a, a, a tower in the apartment and there he had oh, his uh, workshop nice. and he had thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures he, i i can't believe how prolific he was he was drawing all the time and the picture he, he did he took a photo and uh, stored them away so it was, we, he had a drawer with, with those those old in old time when they use um uh, types made of lead to for magazines they had all the letters mm -hmm. uh, like le lead letters and they stored it in, in little boxes. He had a big drawer like that with uh, photos of his artwork. And it was like, I don't know, 10,000 different pictures at least. And many of them was, had never been used. And he was just uh, such a character. And we stayed there for a couple of hours and talked to him. And then, then uh, he, he made the album cover. And when, when we saw it, it was like, whoa, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, and we didn't understand at the time, uh, we, we wouldn't have cared anyway, but we didn't, <clears throat> he was very famous in Sweden. So people, Swedish people who saw it, uh, who knew the history, they thought, oh, Hans Arnold, this is, this is beyond cool. I mean, how did he get Hans Arnold to do this? So um, people either loved it or they hate, hated it. And, but, you know, when people outside Sweden, especially in German Germany, who is, um, at least to us Swedes, uh, we perceive Germans a bit like, you know, everything is by the book, everything is very yes. like the rules, and even, even heavy metal should be like this, 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 yes. this, and check all the boxes. So when they saw <laughs> the artwork, <laughs> they were like, what, what is this? This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, I'm still doing interviews about that record cover you know 22 years later and i remember one interview i did i did it was only about that album cover <laughs> well, and i oh, know that yeah. many people they discovered they discovered uh, the band through that they were so shocked when they saw the album cover and they were curious what what is this it must be some crazy 70s uh, uh, rock or something and then they oh, yes. put it on and it was full blast heavy metal uh, which was also, uh, you know, no one did this music when, when we did it. We were, as far as I know, the only band, at least in Sweden, that we know of. That Because it was really unthinkable to play this music. So this very unexpected music together with this extremely unexpected um, album cover, it, it made uh, people see us, I think. So I, I, I'm really proud of that one. I think it's, it's a good one. I'm, and uh, it, the Germans, they of course, they did a re-release of that album with a terrible, terrible Photoshop <laughs> album cover. More, I mean, when we saw it, we were like, oh, no, what is this? this is horrible. This is horrible. But okay, maybe it will sell some some um, copies because of yes. people won't get scared, but didn't sell <laughs> anyway. It was <laughs> terrible looking. So, yeah, that's the story of the... They couldn't handle it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in, in my uh, my studio. I have it the poster outside my studio at the door. So when I Whoa. walk out from my house, the first thing I see is that beautiful baboon wolf. Uh, that's the first thing I see every morning. So I, I yeah, I still I'd love say, it. Yeah. And the first name of the band was not wolf. Was Wolverine. No, it was Wolverine. Wolverine. Uh, but in Sweden, no one, no one knew w what a Wolverine was, and no one could <laughs> pronounce it, and no one could remember it. 
So, and, and after a while, when we were writing songs and finding our way, but when we wrote in the in Electric Raga and In the Shadow of Steel, the first tracks that became Wolf, then we yes. found like, wow, this is the music that we want to play. And it was more in your face. It was more simple, powerful, just made no excuses. So we thought we might as well change the name to something simpler. And Wolf felt right. If we were talking about the album cover, I would like to ask about the Shadowland album co cover. Like, um, <clears throat> how do you feel the it connects to the the story that album has, and um, who created it as well? It was uh, it, it is an oil painting uh, made by a guy called Thomas Holm. He's a Swedish guy. He's most, he's famous, he's done a lot of album covers for us, almost everyone. He is, after Hans Arnold, he get, got old and died and no one, we weren't allowed to use him anymore anyway. So we had, we started to, we contacted Thomas Holm and he is the man who uh, made the Don't Break the Oath, Oath and Melissa paintings for okay. Merciful Fates and a lot of the early King Diamond stuff. Uh, and we admired him a lot, so we contacted him, and uh, he didn't. He he had been kind of looking for a band to work with, because he sees heavy metal in pictures, and he felt like he was lacking that thing in his life to 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 paint heavy metal. So uh, he was he well, he was glad that we asked. So uh, he did the second album, Black Flame. No, the black Black Wings. Sorry, <laughs> too many blacks. <laughs> Black Wings, uh, and we really love that. And from that on, we have been working with him. And it usually is like, um, as I said, he sees metal in uh, pictures, and he prefers to paint in oil. Uh, so when we have an album ready, when we have the songs ready, I call him up or email him, and I discuss the songs, my thoughts behind the lyrics and the, the title of the album and the themes and he is like me. He, he uses art as a therapy or, you know, to explore yourself and to mm -hmm. react, you know, to, to, um, you know, things around you that happens in your life and in, in the world. And, and usually he's on his travel. We, we may not talk for years. And then when it's time for a wolf album, we talk again and he has made like a, a travel in his life. And I made a travel in my life. And uh, usually there is a, connection there so this one is it, it actually is a painting that he already had painted but it was mm. just so perfect for Shadowland so he sent that one as a suggestion and uh, knowing that the title was Shadowland and when I thought about the song uh, the feeling I got from the song and the whole album th this oil painting just I, I think it was just perfect it was a perfect match and also when i when i recorded the vocals for the song shadowland it's it was difficult because i didn't really have time to uh to rehearse and practice a lot and that that song is very hard to sing it's really really high and but you can't scream it you have to find the right voice you have to find the right attitude and the right space within yourself I do to be able to, to sing it as it should be sung. And I couldn't find the right feeling in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saved, saved that one for last because it was the most difficult song. So I kind of shoved it, you know, in front of me <laughs> and did the easy ones first. But then I, I closed my eyes and I, you know, saw the, this painting for my inner vision. And and also, I mean, Simon, he, he made the, the, the lights go yellow in the studio. Everything was <laughs> yellow. And uh, we turned down the, the normal lights of only yellow lights. I put on my, I have a pair of yellow glasses, actually. It's, it's for night driving. Uh, and I put them on, you know, so it, everything started to look like I got the atmosphere from that album cover. And I closed my eyes and uh, just imagined that because I, I, I knew the lyrics inside out. And 
that was the only way I felt I could sing that song. So, and that tells me that this album cover is the right one. Great That's story. Perfect. Like, to get into the album cover and then sing it is amazing. Not the favorite one, but the one that you can relate the most to. The one I can relate the most to is probably Dust and Shadowland. But the one I like the most, I think, is uh, the ill-fated Mr. Mordrick. Uh, I just I just liked how that song came to be. And it's a cool story that I didn't come up with.